Well, there has been a murder in the mansion, and it is up to you to work out who committed it, uh, what weapon was used, and where the murder occurred. This is a game for between two to six players, and you will be dealt a selection of cards or clues that you can then use along with evidence you gather from other players to find the solution to the game. Getting set up is uh, pretty straightforward. For AlphaCraft members, I have posted some information in our Discord on how to download the fancy menu mod and the config files you need to get the scoring system set up. We also have a custom resource pack on the server that gets the cards, uh, the custom artwork for the cards sorted out. But that is all you need to do to get yourself set up for the game and getting started is as simple as choosing the number of players you are playing with let's go with four players and as long as the game is in the ready state you can hit the deal button and this does take a while there's a little bit of wizardry that is going on downstairs to bring the cards up and get them into the player barrels to work out player one player two player three player four as i said check the tab menu and agree on your ordering before the cards arrive. And then once the light hits the in-progress state your cards have been dealt, I will be player one for this game. Uh, this is a great point to mention the scoring system, so oh, I don't have any people cards. You might want to go through and if you are using this scoring system, uh, I need to mark off the hall, the lounge, the study and the dining room. You might also want to go through here and set up your player names uh, based on the tab order and the player order that you have agreed on. One thing I'll point out is that these cards can't be seen by other players if you are walking around and holding onto them. And of course, this is where the main gameplay begins. There are kind of two steps for each turn and you work your way down the player list using the tab menu as a reference. Oh, there is the movement and then the suggestions. So let's start with the suggestion. On every turn, you can make a suggestion of who committed the murder, uh, what weapon was used and where the murder occurred. You must be in the room that you would like to make the suggestion about. So, for example, if you want to make a suggestion that was Colonel Mustard uh, with the dagger in the living room, you must be in the living room. To get into the living room, you need to push a button. And if you push the button and you hear this sound, your turn is over and you cannot go through the door. If you hear this sound, you are able to proceed with your turn and make your suggestion. And the only exception to this is if you are in one of the corner rooms and you would like to make your next suggestion from the opposite corner, you are able to use one of the house's secret passages to freely move around without having to push the button. So when you make your suggestion, your goal is to be collecting clues from other players. And for example, I may have been in the dining room. Aha. And I might have suggested that it was, I don't know, Professor Plum using the candlestick in the dining room. The next player down the tab list must announce to everybody whether or not they have one of those cards. It doesn't matter if they have more than those cards. They must say, I have one of those cards. They then, if they do, need to privately whisper to you in the game uh, and tell you what one of those cards are. Not that they've got any more. The whole point is to tell you if they have one. So what they would need to do is do a slash command message, uh, type the name that they are messaging. And of course, I'm going to do a selfie just to make it easy. And I would say plum if I had that card. Now, of course, if I did not have a card, I would say no. And the next player down the tab list then will announce if they have a card or not. Once one player has announced they have a card and whispered to you which that card is, that is the end of your turn and play moves on to the next player. 
And of course, if you get through every player and someone doesn't announce that they have a card and tell you what it is, well, you, my friend, have worked out a very valuable piece of information. And so from this point, play continues in a loop, working its way down everyone in the tab screen until someone is confident enough that they think they know what the solution is. At this point, the player on their turn, and this can be either before or after they've made a suggestion, they are then going to make an accusation. And you are allowed to make one and only one accusation. You will announce or accuse a person. Let's say it was Professor Plum, and it happened in, I don't know, the kitchen with the dagger. <laughs> I'm going to say that with absolute confidence. I would then come from wherever I am, and of course the accusation doesn't have to be made in the room. When you make your accusation, plum in the kitchen with the dagger, you come out, and this is the only time you are allowed to look in the solution box, and I got it totally wrong. And this is great, because if you make that final accusation and it does not match what is in the solution box, you, my friend, have failed the game. However, you need to keep playing. You don't need to make any suggestions or accusations, but you do need to still uh, let people know if you have cards, because they're going to keep working through the main game mechanics. If you do find that the solution matches your accusation, then you have won this game. And once all the cards have been returned and sorted back into the system downstairs, you'll find the ready light goes back on and you can start another round. So the last thing to quickly cover off is the two player version of this game. I would actually suggest that you play with three or more. Two becomes quite a quick game, uh, only because you dealt so many cards. However, there's a neat little trick that uh, is based on what the main Cluedo board game would do. I would suggest that you both go and grab all of your cards, uh, then pick a side of the house each, and before the game's... <clears throat> Thank you. Before the game starts, uh, you need to pick two of your cards that you are going to hide. Well, not hide, but put on display in the corner room. So, for example, I might put the conservatory there. And if I was going to do this side of the house, I might then come in and do uh, another... Thank you very much. Uh, another card in here. You can be a little bit clever with which cards you choose. And now, from this point, when the game starts properly, uh, you uh, are technically not holding those cards. You can, of course, check them off before you start the game, if you remember what you've put around there. But then uh, the other players, uh, the other player has to visit that room in order to get the clue that you have left behind there. And so that is the game of Cluecraft. I would love to know what you think, and I cannot wait to start playing this with my friends here on the Alphacraft server. If I can, I'm going to bring a version of this to my community uh, SMP Stagecraft at some point in the future. But for now, folks, that's it. This, I'm so... Hey, this place is amazing. Oh, all right, I'm going to get out of the rain. I'll see you all soon. Bye! <laughs>